Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Grand Theft Auto. If you enjoy this video, please become an airport security guard and plant narcotics in travelers' bags. When they say the contraband isn't theirs, say that you will let them go free if they subscribe to Modest Pelican Gaming. Or otherwise, they can enjoy 25 years in prison or maybe even the death penalty, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Also, I'm on Twitch now and I'd love to see you over there. Modest underscore Pelican underscore Gaming. Link is below. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealth Omato and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. So I load in and Agent 47 is in the shower as per usual. I swear this man showers so much and he showers naked too, the dirty thought. He should shower in a three-piece suit like a good Christian boy. Unfortunately, some bad news though. Crosby couldn't join us today, which is sad, but also worrying as he is the only one who actually knows what he's doing. In good news though, I logged on last week and received a free limited edition office building worth $1 million. So thanks to everyone who messaged me about that, you're all doing God's work. So yeah, obviously I'm going to go and check out my new building. As I pull up, there are bodies everywhere, which is pretty lazy of the city's council and quite frankly a dangerous slip hazard as pedestrians could stumble on the rotting corpses. I ring my fancy ass doorbell and head up to the elevator to the 25th floor. That's high, your boy is becoming a big shot yuppie. I walk inside and the first thing I notice is that my organization is called an organization organization, which has to be the worst name for an organization I have ever seen. It's because I naively forgot to change the name to something better when I purchased the building, so yeah, welcome to an organization. Bad decisions aside, this building is baller. It came with an assistant named Karen, and fun fact, 90% of all female corporate workers are named Karen. It also has the Synergy Fap corner, it has a 3D map of Los Santos which is cool, and finally a lounge office area with floor to ceiling windows that let people know that I'm better than them. I guess now I'm a male CEO, I am also obligated to inappropriately hit on Karen at least once a week week, so I guess that'll happen here too. I ask Stealth Omato to come and meet me, and I run over to buzz him in. We walk into the lobby, and he proceeds to laugh at me for calling my organization an organization. He says I need to change it to something better, or he is leaving the gang, and so I change it to something better and much more creative. I change it to a organization. And just for a cheap laugh though. But I then realize each time you change the name, it costs literally $250,000 and I now have almost no money. So not only is a organization still a terrible name, it's also now grammatically incorrect. A quarter of a million dollars well spent. No point crying about it now though, moving on. You see the brilliant thing about owning an organization is I can now pay $12,000 to have our player names and map icons icons removed for a few minutes. This means no other player will be able to see us coming, and if we drive the right cars and wear the right clothes, they will simply think we are an NPC. For those of you who don't play enough video games and have sad little social lives or go outside or whatever, an NPC is a non-playable character. Basically just one of the bots you see around the city. So as I just wasted all of my money changing one letter, we will first need to go and earn some cash to fund this cunning project. Jeez, look how the gang falls apart when Crosby isn't here. We are broke and Marto has forgotten how to use elevators. It's rough times for the Sons of Virgins right now. On a positive note, last episode I purchased a cocaine lockup, so it shouldn't be too hard for us to sell some coke and make some quick cash. On another positive note, I'm also an excellent driver. We arrive at the lockup without so much as a scratch on my car. I should be an Uber driver. I mean, you might not get to your destination nation in one piece, but you might get to your destination, I guess. It's good to see everyone working hard, but judging by what they're all wearing, I'm a little bit suspicious an orgy might have been taking place minutes before I arrived, but I don't want to be that boss who micromanages everything. After all, we didn't become the most feared nappy sand company in the world by following the rule book. So I log in to my work laptop to check the profits, and it pops up saying zero dollars earned. What the f- 
have you guys been doing this whole time? But then I see the option to sell supplies, so that's my bad. So it looks like Marto and I will have to sell the coke ourselves, but the catch is other players can see us on the map and come and kill us and take the product. I predict a 12 year old in a max upgraded fighter jet is about to bomb us like we were a country with oil. So we drive down to the beach and get into a boat. We then navigate the boat through the various yellow circles and sell the product without so much as firing a single bullet. I honestly don't know why drug dealers make such a big deal of everything. This is the easiest job in the world. How the hell did Pablo Escobar and El Chapo get their own Netflix series? I will never know. What a joke of a career. The only real downside to the mission is I am now in the middle of nowhere, but Mato says he'll pick me up. What a great friend. He tells me to get into his car and I instantly get a three star wanted level as he was already in trouble with the police. What a terrible friend. He catfished me like I was a naive 14 year old schoolgirl. We try to lose the cops, but our front tire gets shot out and Marto drifts the car into a pile up and there happens to be another real player here on the highway. If I've learned anything playing GTA online, it's to kill everyone before they kill you. And so I pistol whip him in the face. I then pistol whip this NPC too, because hoes ain't loyal. Moments later, I am gunned down as we fail to evade the LSPD. Like this is probably karma for me pistol whipping that lad and the NPC. But learning from your previous life experiences and growing as an individual so you can better yourself and the world around you is overrated. So I'ma just keep on yeeting. Anyway, we have cash now so we can afford to go invisible or as it is officially called, ghost organization. Many times now, now and pretend to be NPCs. It's important that we go and buy some plain clothes so that we can look the part. I buy myself a plain black hoodie, the most generic thing I could find. I then purchase a pair of ordinary green cargo pants. I go and see how Mato is doing and he is literally wearing red skinny jeans, boat shoes and a t-shirt with a house cat on it. How in the f world is that something an NPC would wear. He looks like a flamboyant redneck. I convince him to change and we get ready for phase two, finding a suitable NPC girlfriend. I find the perfect woman, long legs, red bob haircut, looks like she might have a crack problem, basically everything you want in a long-term partner. Is this guy bothering you, babe? I punch some cocky lad to show that I will always defend her. Just kidding, finding a girlfriend isn't part of the plan. In seriousness though, I honestly look like part of the gaming world. You wouldn't even look twice. Marto then walks over and delivers one of the cleanest uppercuts I have ever seen for like no reason. This suddenly makes me feel bad for all the NPCs I have killed in the past. In fact, NPCs have been abused by gamers for too long and it's time someone fought for their rights. And that someone is the Sons of Virgins. Also, we need at least some kind of motive or we will be classified as toxic psychopaths rather than passionate extremists. We need a basic looking car and I find a black sedan that will work perfectly that I steal from an NPC. So sorry about that, but it's for the greater good of your people. So relax. I pick up Mato and we activate ghost organization. You see Grand Theft Auto Online has quite a violent culture, which is half the fun. Usually though, the higher level players kill you instantly, but by paying to remove our map markers and gamer tags, it means people are completely unaware and it has evened the playing field for us. We decide to start things off really simply first by just rolling up on some players Players and spraying them down Detroit style. I ask Mato to drive all normal like an NPC and he proceeds to run a red light and then hit a motorbike. The definition of incognito. We roll up on two unaware targets and I hop out and spray down both Iron Bra 95 and XX, it's your girl, XX. I shout, this is for all the forgotten NPCs out there. And then we get back into our car and cruise away easily. We decide to swap to an even more generic looking vehicle, a silver family station wagon, which has terrible acceleration, but excellent boot space. I start to locate our next target, but then someone starts firing a Star Wars looking laser gun at us and it's bloody Iron Bra 95 and XX, it's your girl XX back for revenge. I guess players 
guys don't like being done dirty by the sons of virgins. We have to evade them for six minutes while we wait for ghost organization to cool down and I activate it as soon as I can. Unfortunately, it came available a few seconds too late as XX It's Your Girl XX kills us both. I spawn back in and walk all normal just like an NPC would as I don't think they know what I look like yet. Don't mind me, I'm just a bot programmed to walk down the street like this, but then I pull out an assault rifle and mow down Iron Bra. It's Your Girl gets away as she has a bulletproof Lamborghini, but they clearly realize our advanced mind games are far too sophisticated for their powerful weapons and they run away. Marto and I decide to up the stakes a little bit and so he drives us up to a car park in my RH8 and purposely crashes into a concrete barrier. Wow dude, it's called respecting people's possessions. Marto is actually so toxic, he should be banned from online gaming for five ever. Anyway, we find a little blue sedan and attach several sticky bombs to it. I'm not saying that car bombs are the answer to all the world's problems, but they sure as hell are the answer to some of them. Once we are satisfied that there is enough sticky bombs attached, we load into the car and prepare to find our next NPC hating player. It's crucial that we drive like an NPC and especially that we avoid collisions as we are literally a giant bomb on wheels right now. We find the perfect target and activate ghost organization again. The cover of the night should make this mission a piece of cake. We roll up on a guy and he even pauses the game and looks at the map while we are right there in his line of sight. Marto pulls up close to him and I get out to run clear of the explosion before I detonate. But then Marto, in one of the most heroic acts of 2019, detonates his car while still sitting inside, exploding himself and the NPC hating player Bigot. What a way to go though. Especially as now Marto can enjoy the afterlife and party with 72 virgins and drink fine wine for eternity. Just kidding, he respawns and we decide to see how close we can get to another player while pretending to be pedestrians. We are actually pretty good at being pedestrian bots too. I then suddenly have this horrible thought that maybe all of of these NPCs we see walking around aren't actually bots, but they are just kids from like Venezuela or something being paid to walk around in our video game worlds. How cool is that? Cheap child labor is making our gaming experiences so immersive. We get right up and close to the target and he just has no idea that we are other real players. I love that Rockstar included this feature in the game. Marto being Marto then runs over and starts laying into the guy and of course I run over to help my boy out. The element of surprise has made this encounter all too easy, but then an NPC driver comes in for the assist. Whether you're a Bot or a child slave, just know we appreciate you, my NPC friend. And someone from our server then texts me in game and asks if I'm the real modest pelican and says he watches my videos, so you know I have to go and meet this legend. I go and meet him, and he has a nice chrome sports car which he drifts around the car park like a boss. Then we just stand there pointing at each other for a while for some reason. Marto asks how to point, and I misspeak and say right trigger instead of right stick. Marto then proceeds to punch my boy, Trump has my meme, in the face and then he guns us down, which is fair enough. Anyway, shout out to Trump has my meme, you're a legend mate. Well without Crosby, we have spent a few hundred thousand dollars and achieved absolutely nothing today, but hey, we had a few laughs. Next episode, we'll get back to making some cash and taking over Los Santos. Thanks for watching you bloody legends and a massive thank you to my patrons who support the channel through Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.